Hola, hola! Welcome to this week's pledge video, lesson number six, how to stop procrastination. I'm really excited to be with you, here with you. Thank you for being here with me. Um, and I'm going to be showing my face real quickly, I mean soon. Um, and I'm really, really happy that you are all here. Okay, great. So let's shift over. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. I am so excited to talk about this topic on how to stop procrastinating. Procrastination is one of the things that really stops us from achieving our success. And as you know, with this whole new pledge on Live Life Your Way, my goal and my mission is to get you to start achieving your goals and that is you being successful okay so today one of the biggest things is procrastination and there are certain things that go with um, procrastination there's a there's also a psychological component that I'll also be sharing with you today and how to really move forward from that so today we're going to be covering two things and I have my notes here, yay. <laughs> As you know, I get off topic sometimes, so my notes keep me on track. And you know something, this is important. If you know that this is a part of some of your goals, because it's amazing, I love that things come to me spontaneously, but sometimes it takes me off track. So I know that. So I do what I need to do to make sure that I'm still delivering what I am promising. So that is me taking notes. So if you see me looking at my notes, no, don't be afraid. It's because I want to give you the best. Okay, so today we're going to be covering two things. So today we're going to be talking about the 11 reasons why we procrastinate. Okay, right, what's going on? Why are we procrastinating? And then the second thing we're going to be covering today is 11 practical ways to get yourself out of procrastination, right? To really stop the procrastination. And it begins with you. And I'm here to give you the tools, okay? I cannot make you do anything you don't want to do, but I can share with you the tools and the techniques that have helped me step out of procrastination and has helped the many people that I've worked with step from I'm procrastinating to now I am being successful, I am thriving, I am moving forward and it just takes these little altering things to really move me in that direction. So I'm excited to share this with everyone. So I hope you all can see, I'm just checking on my phone um, also because um, when you're on the computer you can't see the comments. So for those of you who are also wanting to do Facebook Live and you end up doing it on your phone, on your computer, one thing you want to have on hand is another device like a phone or a tablet that will allow you to see the comments that everyone is sharing. So as you roll in, say hi. I'm excited to be here with you all and let's get started. So. I hope you all can hear me well. If anything, let me know. I have my headset here and I'm excited. So first I want to talk about the 11 common, you know, reasons as to why we procrastinate. Okay. So common reason number one is you don't know how or where to begin. This is one of the biggest things in procrastination, especially when starting with a new project we don't know where to begin or we don't know where you know we don't know where to start how to start it and that's one of the reasons why you know a lot of us end up procrastinating the second um common reason for us procrastinating is oh sorry <laughs> let me fix that okay this can you see me because i know i moved the camera okay awesome good we're back on track okay so the second common reason why we procrastinate is uh, we feel a lack of skill, right, to complete the task. And this is, you know, oh, I need to finish school. I need to do a new certification. And that is one of the ways that we procrastinate. And most of the time we don't need that certification or that extra schooling. We just need to go out and start getting things done. So number three, the third one is, you know it would be good for you, 
right, to complete that task. But for some reason, you find it to be boring, okay? And this is something that, or you feel that you don't have the skill to, to complete. Like, you know it would be good, it will get you on the right path, but it takes a little bit more effort. And sometimes it can seem like it's a little boring. So it's important for us to see the big goal in this, okay? So number four, you believe you don't have enough information about the topic or task. And this falls under um, perfectionism, right? Where you feel that everything needs to be perfect. You know, if you're trying to start a business, oh, I have to make sure I have my website, everything, my logo, all of these things. And I'm here to tell you, just get started. And as time goes on, you just continue to improve, right? I'm continuously shifting my website. I'm continuously shifting many different things. And you just got to get started and get moving. That is the biggest thing. So tip, um, common reason why we procrastinate number five is the fear of failure, right? It's the fear of if I give my all and I fail, then what? Okay, it's, it's almost like this mistrust in yourself and in your divine path, okay? It's, um, common reason number six is fear of success, right? Which is the complete opposite of feeling of failure, but fear of success, fear of success is, is being fearful that when you achieve this point of success, you won't be able to handle the demands. You won't be able to handle the, the, the difference and the transformation that it will require you in your life. You know, if you, you are trying to go and be a business person, one of the biggest things is building clientele, right? And being, you know, um, creating a schedule, right? So those are some things. Number seven, fear of change of the environment and your social circle. This is one of the big things that I've seen. It's like, if I grow and my best friend doesn't grow or my lover doesn't grow with me, then what happens to my relationships with these people, right? And also the environment around me, will I continue to enjoy the things that I enjoyed before, right? So there is that fear of the change of environment. Common um, reason number eight is you feel you know better or you know more, right? Well, I don't need to do that. I could do it. I could do it my own way, right? And I've seen this a lot with people. Well, I can start I could do my own thing on my own. And a lot of the times that takes a lot longer, right? And we don't have the accountability to move forward. Common reason number nine is overwhelming yourself, right? Trying to control every detail. This is completely overwhelming yourself over, you know, trying to control everything. Again, a part of the perfectionism, okay? Common Reason number 10 is it seems like a lot of work to do, right? There's like just so much work to do. And reason number 11 is the lack of discipline, structure, and organization, right? It's that accountability. Um, and that's something that's really something that really affects a lot of us. So I have a question, right? And my question is, do you see a common theme in these common reasons of procrastination, right? Just ask yourself, what is the common theme here? Okay, just sit with yourself for a moment. Yeah, so when I sat and I looked at this, I was like, what is the common theme here? And what I began to realize is that the common theme here with procrastination is self-destructive beliefs or limited beliefs about our own potential, right? All of these can connect to, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, right? Um, who am I to do that? It hits those kind of worthiness places in ourselves, okay? So I wanted to make that really clear because that's something that we all kind of struggle with, okay? So see how these 
be limited beliefs, these limited self-destructive beliefs of ourselves are controlling our life, our experiences, and guess what? The results that we are wanting to attract in our life. Okay, great. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how to really shift your mindset, because we're not going to talk about that so much today, but I am doing a webinar this week on reprogramming your mindset and transforming your life. See, I'm going to give you 11 tools right after this about on how to really move to the next level, right? Not, not to get stuck in the procrastination cycle. But something that is really important that these tips really cannot address is your mindset. And when you are working towards a goal and your mindset isn't in alignment with the success of the goal, most times you are not going to succeed in that goal, okay? Because something will continuously show up in your life to distract you, to push you away from the actual um, success and the goal and the result that you are trying to bring forward, okay? So before we get to the second steps, right, the second thing I promised you, I want to recite the pledge, okay? So I'm going to share that here on the screen. Um, let me pull that up. So here is the pledge, and I'm going to share the screen with you. So I ask that you recite the pledge along with me. I pledge that from this moment on, I will do whatever it takes to be the best version of myself. I will be kind to myself. I will love myself in every state that I am in. I will invest in my personal growth. I say yes to myself and I completely embody the belief that I am more than good enough to attract all good into my life. Yay, thank you for reciting the pledge with me. You know, this is one of the things that has helped me really remove my procrastination habits, right? This, reciting this every day, my pledge, this is my little index card pledge, right, that I read every single day. Every time I read it, it reminds me of my goal. And that is one of the tips that I'm going to be sharing with you today, too. So let me just take out my paper. <laughs> okay, so tip number one, break your work into individual steps, okay? This is great for those of us who feel overwhelmed. When we're feeling overwhelmed, you know, we see the big picture, we see that success, you know, I want to be an actress, I want to be a painter, I want to express my work, I want to be a dancer. You know, all of these different things. I want to be a healer. I want to be a therapist. I want to be a doctor. A part of our procrastination is that we see the big picture and we get overwhelmed because it's like it seems so distant, right? And that is the problem when we are trying to work towards a goal is when we feel too much of a gap between where I am and where I want to go. So when we break it down into individual steps, right? Small little increments. It helps us move forward. And you want to work with what you have now and then slowly start incorporating new, new things as you go along. Work with what you have now. Very important. Tip number two is change your environment, okay? Choose an environment that has the least amount of distractions. Okay, if you need to go to the library and rent out a little cubicle, do it. Because a lot of times we want to do things and like, let's say you're starting your own home business. There's a lot of distractions when you're in your home, right? It's like, oh, I have dishes in the sink. I have to wash the dishes. Oh, the TV. Oh, I, I need to clean this. I need to do that. And the next thing you know, your whole day passes by and you didn't get to the task that you want to do versus just changing your environment that forces you almost, right, not in a negative way, but in a positive way that forces you into the space of, well, the only thing I can do in this cubicle is work on this project. So it keeps you focused, right? It keeps you direct into focus. Tip number three is create a timeline, okay? And we're talking about timeline with dates of when to be completed. And something that also works 
is creating a breakdown of your day. And this is something, you know, this is something that I use all the time. Let's say I have like five projects that I want to complete this day. Okay, like I want to do my webinar, I want to share the webinars, I want to do this, I want to do that, right? And let's say I have five things on my list and I have one day and let's say I'm going to be dedicating hours from, you know, nine to five, right? Nine to five, I'm dedicating to get all of these mission, all of these projects completed that I really want to complete because it makes me feel happy, it makes me feel good and I feel closer to my goal, right? So a way to break it down is, okay, I'm going to work on this part first, right? So it's like from 10 to 11, I'll do this project. From 12 to 1 is another project, okay? And then you break it down. And some projects are an hour, some are 15 minutes, some take two hours, some take five hours. So you want to also put that into consideration when you are looking at what it is that you are create, what you're putting in your day. Because a lot of times we make these lists, right, of all the things we want to do, and we don't take into account how long these things take. And when we don't have all the stuff checked off, we make ourselves wrong, right? Oh, I didn't get to do all of those things. No, if we could break it down and be somewhat of a realist, right, and see how long does these things take, then you could really create movement, okay? So number four is eliminate distractions, right? And this is, you know, if you're doing work on the computer, minimize the, you want to, to minimize the browsers that you have open, you know, the window browsers. Don't have things that are going to distract you. If you're working on, you know, writing a paper or writing your book, right, if you're working on something along those lines, then don't have browsers that are going to pop up and, and be distracting you, like having your Facebook link open or having YouTube open and things along those lines. Because what that does is it's just creating distraction and pushing you away from what you actually want to succeed in, right, and completing your goals, okay? And tip number five is block time off right? You want to block time off. You want to block breaks because what I've seen is that people all completely overwhelm themselves. They're overbooked. They, they exhaust themselves because they don't, ex they don't give breaks. So right now, for instance, before this, um, before I go live, I review my notes. I look at it, make sure that I'm in, uh, that it feels good and that everything is good, right? Then I go live. After I'm live, I take about a 20 minute break or so, so that I can rejuvenate and then I come back. Do I have comments? And then I'll do the comments and then I move into my next project, right? It's important to give yourself breaks. Let me tell you, it is so refreshing because when you try to sit there and work through it, right? Let's say, and, and you're just pushing yourself through, you don't allow yourself to be creative. What you're doing is you're forcing yourself to be in a space. Right, and when you can take a break, come back, you have all of this new energy, ideas, and things that kind of flow a little bit more easily. And I know this based on experience, okay? Um, so that is important. So, number six is be around inspirational people, okay? And, and people who motivate you. And it might not be people in your proximity, right? If you could be around people physically in the proximity of people, that is great. If you cannot, then listen to people who are inspirational to you. Okay, one of the things that I've seen with procrastination is that people will start a project, yeah, and for their goal. But then over time, the momentum of completing the goal starts to decrease, right? This momentum just starts to decrease to the point where then you just completely stop, right? And when the momentum starts going down and you recognize that you're losing momentum in your goal, you have to bring yourself back into the motivators that got you motivated in the first point to go towards that goal. That's really important is to create and know your motivators. So for instance, for myself, my motivators are listening to audiobooks, right? Listening to um, 
YouTube of people who are who naturally motivate me, right? Like Tony Robbins, um, Esther Hicks. These are I'll listen to a 15 minute clip and I am juiced up my motivation. I'm thriving and I'm able to complete the tasks that I need to complete. And also another thing that's been helping me has been my pledge, right? When I recite this, this brings in, I'm doing whatever it takes. I'm moving forward. I'm doing, it keeps me in the momentum. It reminds me as to why I am doing what I'm doing because we get distracted by so many things in our life, you know, and things happen to all of us, right? Things are always circling around and we cannot let those things push us away from what it is that we want to bring into our life. And this, this has allowed me to do that, right? Reciting the pledge, you know, working on my personal growth, working on being kind and loving to myself and knowing without a doubt in my body, in my energy, that I attract all good into my life, right? That everything that is I'm experiences, experiencing is for my better good and to help me move forward and to help me share that with other people, okay? And that's just because that's a part of my mission. My, my mission is about bringing everyone along with me, okay? So that's another one. Number seven is get an accountability buddy, okay? This could be a friend that you can trust to keep you on point, right? We all, we all have that one friend that kind of is not a bullshitter. It's like you said you were going to do something, so do it. And why haven't you done it? And they're like, I want to see you succeed. Go get it done. Go get it done. Go get it done. I know you can do it. I'll call you back in an hour to make sure that you got it done, right? Sometimes we have that friend. If we don't, then it might be best to get a coach, right? Some form of accountability, right? You don't want to just rely on yourself because the thing is we create excuses for ourselves. Oh, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I, I, you know, worked late last night and you know something accountability will say, you know, something you said you were going to do something, you're going to do it. And that is what is one of the most powerful things in, in stopping and really removing procrastination is like, oh, someone is counting on me to get this done. You know, so like a part of my accountability is that every Tuesday at 1230, I'm going to be here live on Facebook, right? Giving you the lesson of the week from the pledge, right? From living life your way, right? So what's keeping me accountable is my word to you, right? It's People are expecting me to be here and to share this every week. They're expecting to see me live on Facebook and they're expecting to receive an email from me with the recording, right? So that then they can watch it and really start implementing what it is that I'm talking about this week, right? And these are all topics that you have requested, right? I'm not just coming up with topics. These are topics that people have requested like you. So know that you can request topics at any time, right? So feel free, send me messages right on my Facebook wall. I, I love that, right? Because it helps me, gives me what you need, right? So what this does is when you keep yourself accountable, that's a form of accountability, right? I'm sticking with my word. I'm saying this and I'm doing this, okay? Awesome. The next thing is, Number eight is to seek out individuals who already have accomplished what you want to accomplish. Okay, I'm going to have a drink of water. Give me a moment. Thank you. So seek out individuals who have already achieved what it is or the goal that you're trying to achieve in your life. Right. What is that goal that you're trying to achieve? And who are some people who have inspired you who have done the same thing? You know, if, if you're trying to write a book and there's, you know, an author that is, um, that you, that really motivates you to write your book, then see how you can connect with that person. If you can't connect with that person in a physical way, right, then connect with them by following their work, right? following their webinars or their um, book signings, their audio tapes, their classes, and all of their books. That keeps you in the alignment. It keeps you in the vibrational frequency of the completion of that goal, 
right? You want to write a book, then you surround yourself with successful writers. Don't surround yourself with people who are just hoping to be a writer because you're in a lower vibrational frequency that you don't want to be in. Number nine is revisit your goals. It is important, right? We talk about uh, vision boards and things like that. And uh, also, you know, just making a list of your goals. This is something that's important. It has been provenly, it has been proven that people who write down their goals, just by simply writing down their goals, are 40% more likely to succeed in completing their goals. Just by writing them down, right? Just by writing down your goals, you increase your chances of completing your goals by 40%. Now, that is mind-boggling, right? That's because what happens is you make it real. It's written down. You see it. You visit it, right? And step number nine is about you revisiting your goals, right? And what that does is it allows us to see. It allows us to see what we want, right? It allows us to see the goal because we can get distracted, you know? We can't. Things do come up in our life that distracts us, right? Um, health, relationships, vacations, all of the, and not everything has to be a negative distraction, yeah? It could be great distractions, but it still pushes us away from our goals. So having and revisiting your goals is another tip to help you stop procrastinating because it gets, again, you feeling that momentum, that motivation, that inspiration that you got to f when you first started to work on your goal. Tip number 10 is to stop overcomplicating it. Stop overcomplicating your task. Okay, we have this big goal and then we complicate it by putting all these other things on top of it and we get completely overwhelmed. Break it down into baby steps. Okay, one step at a time. And the baby steps will get you so much further than you trying to just get to the end result than what you can actually imagine. It's... It is so powerful when you could break things down into easy, doable steps that you can do on a daily or weekly basis or by daily um, basis based on your goal. Okay. And tip number 11 is just get started. Just get started, right? S stay, go and do and just start. It doesn't matter if you do it right. It doesn't matter if you do it wrong. What matters is that you get started. Because one of the biggest things with procrastination is that we never start. And you don't want to think in five years from now, if I would have started this goal five years ago, I could have completed it already. Right? So you want to think about it from that form. I need to get started. And the universe, once you get started, the universe gives you all the materials that you need. Okay? And there's also that component of mindset, right? That's also important. So these are great tips, right? They're, they're very helpful and that can get us moving. But something that I also want to point out to you is that if you have a healthy mindset, a healthy way of seeing yourself these steps will be helpful but if you have a mindset and this is not something conscious right this is unconscious subconscious and most of the time we don't even know that these programs are running these self-limited beliefs and what i'm telling you is join me on the webinar this week i'm having it twice thursday i'm doing it two different times and this saturday Okay, so join me. I'll have the information below. And I'm also going to share um, it up here. Let me pull it up for you. Let me. Okay, so now it's on the page. And this is to reprogram your mindset and transform your life. Right? And this, what this program is designed to get you move, the, the program, the, the webinar is designed to get you moving, to stop procrastinating, to move forward, to really see your power, your potential in succeeding, right? Because our mindset is what we tell ourselves on a daily basis continuously. It's not like once a day. We're telling ourselves every day, and this is where we're making our decisions. See, 
The reason why mindset is so important is because it is where we make our decisions. And it's important if you want to succeed in your goal, then it is important for you to get your, your mindset in alignment of success. And that is what I'm going to be sharing with you in the webinar this week. So I hope you join that. And I do want to let you know that if you know anyone who is struggling with procrastination or you find that this um, video was helpful, I ask for you to share this video. And as a special thank you, I will enter you into my special raffle of winning a free one hour coaching session with me. In this coaching session, what we do is we strategize your goals and we create an easy to do plan uh, towards achieving your goal. Okay, and that in itself is priceless because you'll know where to begin and that's one of the problems with procrastinating. So if you're finding that you are having a lot of procrastination issues, right, that you really want to get started but you just don't know how, then share this video and you may win a session with me so we can work on those goals with you. Okay, awesome. So I'll have the information below. Share this video. I really enjoy being with you with you here this week and i look forward to seeing you next week on the pledge join me every tuesday at 12 30 p.m eastern standard time and until the next time i love you unconditionally namaste